morning. My name is Jenny Whittle and I'm a professor of geomatics. And I'm Dr. Simon Hull, the current program convener for geomatics. Welcome to the Geomatics 2021 Virtual Open Day. We're glad that you're interested in learning more about geomatics and hope this presentation will help you to understand the program and the opportunities for graduates in the work environment. At the end of the presentation, we'll be answering your questions. Please write these into the question and answer tool. But for now, sit back and relax while we introduce you to the world of geomatics. Spatial positioning is core to the discipline of geomatics. This involves describing the relationship of data in space and time within a multidimensional coordinate system. This ability may be devoted to the measurement of the Earth, the mapping of nations and the seas, the control of engineering projects, and the recording of property rights in professional land surveying. Geomatics is both an applied science and a professional discipline. As an applied science, a student of geomatics is involved in spatial science, that is the collection, analysis, management, modeling and communication of spatial data. As a professional discipline, the degree is endorsed by the South African Geomatics Council for various registration categories in a profession that engages in a wide range of disciplines, including engineering, environmental sciences, land administration and law. The profession has undergone some changes over the years. I studied an undergrad in surveying and mapping in the 90s. Around that time, there was an international move to rebrand it as geomatics to recognize the integrated cross-disciplinary influences that have been shaping the profession, such as satellite positioning technologies, for example, GPS, and information systems infrastructures, such as GIS. UCT adopted this name in the early 2000s. We are now talking about rebranding again to recognize modern influences and opportunities. Whatever we call it, our history dates back to the Egyptians and Babylonians, but that doesn't mean it's outdated. You will learn a wide range of skills and knowledge using state-of-the-art instruments and software to address many modern challenges, such as big data management and the fourth industrial revolution, spatial data science, land reform, spatial inequality, climate change, and many more. That means you get hands-on experience to measure stuff with equipment ranging from ordinary tape measures to laser scanners, drones, and satellites. You will learn how to operate equipment to get the best possible measurements. You will also learn that no measurement is error-free and how to handle this reality. You will learn skills related to understanding errors and how to handle the effects of measurement errors to get the best solution so that when you say that Table Mountain is 1,086 meters high, People believe you because you're the best qualified person to make that statement. You will also learn how to manage your data. We collect a lot of data, so big data management is important. You will learn how to use your data to create models of the physical and natural world. By models, I mean two things. Firstly, simplifications of reality in the form of 2D maps or 3D virtual models. And secondly, forecasts of what could happen next, for example, what would happen if the sea level rose by one meter? How fast is vegetation in a certain area diminishing? You also learn how to make sense of the data to answer relevant questions, such as where is the best location for a wind farm? And we teach you how to communicate your findings, predominantly using maps, but also with graphs, charts, tables, and reports. Within geomatics, there are some specializations. The first image shows some of the work environments in the surveying, land surveying and geodesy fields. Here you could be measuring land for property development purposes or surveying other sub objects such as ships, factories or even film sets. Geodesy is the specialisation in which you'd be helping in the measurement of sea level rise and continental drift, millimetres over large distances. Or you could be involved in monitoring and controlling global satellite systems such as GPS. A professional land surveyor spends about half their day in the office and the rest conducting field work. They measure property boundaries to create new land parcels. This image shows a general plan of a piece of high-value coastal land in Milneton outside Cape Town. This type of plan is a legal document and shows the spatial location and extent of land ownership. It's linked to the title deed, which has the verbal detail of the property rights. This is the shape of the equipotential surface of the earth. It's a surface of constant gravity we call the geoid. It approximates the shape of mean sea level if there were no continents. 
A geodesist models this surface from actual measurements of gravity made on the surface of the terrain and also from satellite measurements of gravity. Geodesists also measure the movement of the Earth's rotation axis and its continents. This map shows the vectors of current plate tectonics measured using satellite positioning techniques to millimeter precision over large distances. Sea level rise can also be measured and modeled. It's not an easy task as the changes are small, also over very large areas and long time periods. And when one considers the Earth, everything is moving. Tidal forces of the moon and the sun not only pull the water, causing sea tidal variations, but they also cause the land to rise and fall by about half a meter with each cycle, called Earth tides. Ocean loading is the weight of the high tide on the Earth's crust, causing it to deform. All these effects need to be modeled in the determination of sea level rise. Once predictions of sea level rise are made, these can be used in a GIS simulation of the potential flooding of coastal areas, such as we see in this image. Some surveyors choose to move into the hydrographic surveying field of work and spend time offshore. They would typically be involved in mapping the seabed as well as surface and subsea structures such as pipelines, fiber optic, intercontinental internet cables, and mining structures. This slide illustrates remote sensing from Earth orbiting satellites and airborne laser scanning. Satellite images of the Earth are used, along with ground-based data sources and even images obtained using fixed-wing aircraft or drones. These are all imported into a geographic information system, allowing the geometrician to manipulate and analyze the data and create maps and plans for various purposes, as shown on the right. Terrestrial laser scanning is a growing and exciting technology. It involves measuring objects using the distance a laser beam travels to an object and back again. Each distance and its direction is used to create a point coordinate where the laser beam was reflected off the object. Many points are created and are called a point cloud. This object, the Peace Memorial Museum in Zanzibar, was scanned. This is the resulting digital model created from the laser scanned data. And here is a bird's eye view of the point cloud. From this data, a surface can be created over the points. And in the end, the digital model looks like the real object and measurements can be made from it in three dimensions. It's a technology that is becoming widely used in the gaming and film industries as well. We have a number of internal laboratories and even some outdoor ones. Many of our students love the outdoors and enjoy the field work while others prefer to be indoors. We run both laboratory-based camps and fieldwork camps. These camps are a great way to consolidate knowledge and to bond with other students and talk informally to staff. In geomatics, we have only about 40 students in each first year class, so we're more like a family. Strong relationships are forged, which can last a lifetime. Geomatics offers a four-year professionally accredited BSc Geomatics degree with two streaming options, surveying or geoinformatics. Surveying students take all geomatics courses, while geoinformatics students take some geomatics courses and then choose another major from the science faculty. The options are environmental and geographical science or computer science. As a student of geomatics, you would take courses in mathematics, physics, environmental science, computer science and statistics to provide a platform for geomatics courses later in the degree. A UCT degree in geomatics is recognized worldwide and offers exciting opportunities in a rich and varied lifestyle, working in or out of doors. Graduates are equipped with a highly marketable toolbox of both hard and soft skills, the degree that reflects the diversity and interdisciplinary nature of the practice environment. There's a shortage of professionals in surveying and geoinformation science, both in South Africa and abroad, resulting in good employment prospects. Career opportunities exist in consultancy practices, aerial survey companies, offshore survey companies, mining houses, and of course in government. So what do you need to do geomatics? Well, the entrance requirements are, are clear. You need maths at 75% or above and physical sciences at 70% or above because maths and physical sciences are both really integral to most of the subjects that we cover. You need a faculty for faculty point score of 450 or above. 
We do accept at 10% below these requirements for the maths and physical sciences and offer as much support as we can where this is needed. We now hand over to Associate Professor Adira for the question and answer part of this session. Well, welcome to the Q&A session. This is a very interesting session where we are willing to answer the, some of the questions that you may have concerning geomatics and the programs that are related to geomatics. So please feel welcome to uh, post your questions on the Q&A section. It is live right now. Just to mention that we have got uh, uh, Prof uh, Jenny uh, in the room uh, from Geomatics. We also have got uh, uh, Sumi from Geomatics. I, I, I hope they'll be joining or they have already joined. We have Rachma from Administration and we have Ogla in the background dealing with the IT issues. So thank you very much and, and welcome. Maybe I can start with some of the common questions that students normally ask from the previous uh, uh, open days. Students will always want to know where they can work with the geomatics program. And, and I can uh, say some of the areas where geomatics students can, can work or, or graduates. And some of them are in the IT uh, section, some of them are in the agriculture uh, segment. And something like geothermal exploration and exploitation, like siting uh, or potential wind and solar power plants. So that is in the energy uh, sector, uh, mapping and monitoring field crops, uh, growth and of course uh, production uh, to predict yield. So that one is in the agricultural sector. Mapping of ground and surface uh, water, including vulnerability to contamination, that is in the uh, water sector. So we have got very many areas of application, including modeling floods and landslides. So that one is also in the water and environment sectors. You may also think of other areas like measurement and determination of orbits. And in this case, I mean satellite uh, orbits. So basically, you can work with South African National Space uh, Agency and of course the uh, South African Astronomical Observatory. You may also work in the uh, measurement and determination of the dynamics of the Earth crust. And in that case, you will be working with the uh, Council for Geoscience and of course, very many other areas. So as I uh, wait for your questions, please can you uh, post them through and I'll be able to respond to, to them and also ask my colleagues to respond to some. Okay, maybe I can move on and talk about navigation uh, and guidance of aircraft using satellite and inertial navigation systems. So this in this case, you will be able to work with civil aviation and of course defense. Special mapping of human settlement and even uh, human diseases, including animal diseases. And so in this case, you can be working with uh, health uh, or Ministry of Health. We also have got topographic mapping using satellite and terrestrial or ground based techniques to facilitate structural planning and construction. And in this case, you'd be working in the construction industry. We also have virtual reality modeling, and of course, this is applicable in e-commerce. We also have got tourism, marketing, and property management. So if you are thinking about business and tourism sectors, this uh, course is very relevant for you. And measurement and subdivision of land is also something that uh, uh, most of the attendees must be aware of, uh, very uh, hot uh, issue in the country and even elsewhere. And so you may be thinking of Department of Rural Development and Land Reforms, and of course, the private surveying sector. Of course, setting out of engineering structures, this uh, whole uh, range of uh, field of work that uh, geomaticians do, and they work in the construction industry too. Maybe I can ask uh, Rachma to uh, give us some indication about uh, uh, application. 
When are the applications expected this year? Hi, our applications have already opened for the 2022 um, admission cycle. You can apply online um, at applyonline.uct.ac.za. It's also important for the applicants to uh, use the 2022 undergraduate prospectus, which lists all of our programs on offer, as well as the requirements that are um, needed for the uh, specific programs. They are the National Senior Certificate um, entrance requirements listed, as well as the non NSC requirements. So if you have any international schooling, you can find the requirements in the prospectus as well. The requirements are listed on pages 31 to 33 of the prospectus. Thank you very much. I would now want to uh, welcome uh, Sumi, who is one of our final year students, to give us uh, some of her experiences with a geomatics program. Welcome, Sumi. Thank you, Dr. Adera. Hello, everyone. My name is Ntumi Makwarela, and I am a final year student um, studying geomatics at the University um, of Cape Town, majoring in land surveying. Um, what inspired me to study geomatics was my passion for geography. Um, I saw the possibility in the degree in helping me find a, um, a career that was um, related to geography. Um, and also would just enable me to become a change maker in society by equipping me with the relevant skills and the knowledge um, required or, or necessary in the transformation of the built environment, especially in marginalized and previously disadvantaged areas in South Africa. Although I must add that um, geography is not necessarily a requirement in, um, in, in applying for the degree. Um, what made me choose UCT or want to study geomatics at UCT in particular was the diversity of the degree. Although I'm majoring in land surveying, um, I still got exposure to other fields such as geographical information systems, town planning, which I want to further specialize in, um, photogrammetry, and even Odyssey, all of which um, have been well combined um, in the geomatics degree. Uh, my experience um, or my academic experience has been wonderful and I'd say that is owing to the world-class experience at the University of Cape Town. Um, the facility, okay, as a geomatics student, you do spend quite a lot of time um, in the geomatics labs, all of which um, have been well equipped with uh, current software and applications or relevant um, to industry. And not only that, but in addition to, you know, your theoretical learning experiences, um, the geomatics degree also has a camp um, which is hosted in the outskirts of Cape Town, where you get to further bond with your fellow classmates, um, explore more of, of the scenery even um, of, of the Western Cape, while importantly still covering the practical aspects of, of the degree as well. So these um, have all just essentially made my experience quite holistic and I would definitely encourage anyone who wants to see themselves as a change maker in society um, to definitely apply, apply, apply. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sumi. We have got a question now on the uh, chat. Uh, someone is asking, uh, this is Tandy, asking about uh, changing from uh, uh, doing EGS program in, in, in four years instead of, of uh, I mean, in five years instead of four years. Yes, it is possible, Tandy. You can, uh, you can choose uh, five years, especially after uh, in second year. If you are in second year, you can choose to do to move to an aspect program, and in that case, you can complete your program in in five years instead of four years. Uh, the other question is down there, Sandy again asking uh, about uh, moving to uh, sociology. Uh, Jenny, can you see that uh, question from Sandy and respond to it? Yes, it, it all depends on the timetabling. Um, so yes, you certainly can take options from sociology, although uh, the, the comp size stream 
is 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 really very um, very difficult and and very full. So it's difficult to fit in extra courses, um, but it's certainly something we'd be able to advise you on right at registration, and we'd be able to have a look at what sociology courses are there and what fits in with the timetable and so on. So if you have a deep interest in the humanities, as you say, certainly we we try to work around that as much as possible. Um, but but getting a major in computer science, it is a very full program with the geomatics as well. So it does become problematic. It all depends on how much you can cope with as well. If we can see that you're coping really well, then you know you can take on more. If you're not coping so well, then we advise you not to. So it, it does really depend on those factors. Thank you so much. I think it uh, it will be very difficult to to do that too. But maybe you can you can try. I would like to thank you all for joining us in this session and we would love to see you register with us and don't forget to contact to contact Dr. Simon Hall who is the program uh, uh, convener for Geomatics. I've already posted his uh, uh, email address on the Q&A so please do contact us and we'd love to hear from you even later after this session. Thank you so much.